My name is Tony Williams. I work for the Australian Research Collaboration Service. Uh, my background is that I'm a physics professor um, in theoretical and computational physics, but uh, over the years developed a strong interest in e-research uh, and grid activities. So that's how I ended up working for ARCS, the Australian Research Collaboration Service. ARCS is one of the components of e-research infrastructure, or in the UK you might say e-science for example. Um, one of the components of e-research infrastructure that the federal government is funding in Australia. And uh, our particular mission is around interoperability, uh, collaboration and uh, authorization, and more recently also data storage infrastructure. So we're responsible for the grid in Australia and its connectivity to the rest of the world. Uh, we're responsible for providing video collaboration services to Australian researchers. We're responsible for providing integrated data storage uh, infrastructure in Australia. And uh, we provide an interface to single sign-on. Uh, we provide authorization infrastructure so that uh, users with uh, a digital identity from the university can access service, services, e-research services, for example, based on that digital identity. Um, we uh, work with uh, EVO, EVO, which is a video collaboration, <coughs> desktop video collaboration tool that uh, really came out of CERN. In fact, Philippe Galvez is the uh, high energy experimentalist from CERN who developed EVO for the high energy physics community to do collaboration around the world uh, with video and audio. So we basically uh, work with Philippe to deliver an Australian version of that uh, called EVO at AU. And uh, so we provide that to any researcher, in, in fact, any university uh, in Australia to use, and they can use it to talk to themselves or talk to other people overseas. The, another example of a service is the ARCS Data Fabric, which is basically um, a single file system which is distributed across the country. So any researcher anywhere in the world can access their data, um, which is usually held in more than one site around Australia. So it looks like a single directory structure when you log in, um, even though it's actually distributed storage. Uh, and. Um, we're also integrating that with this identity provision, this authentication and authorization system that we're building in Australia. Grid computing, um, the way we're viewing it in Australia, is it's the basic uh, underlying infrastructure that connects computing resources around the world. Um, I think the sophisticated users in the science community uh, are comfortable using the grid in the way it looks now, but we, we're taking the attitude in Australia that for less sophisticated users, they want an interface to that, um, which gives them experience of just submitting a job and it's going off and running and they don't know where or necessarily how. Um, so we're calling that a cloud-like interface to the grid. And so we're, we're evolving things in that way. So of course we're participating in the worldwide initiatives in, in building a grid that connects to the rest of the world's grids. But um, we, we're trying to develop on top of that uh, a user-friendly interface which is typically based on a, a specific tool. So a bioinformatician might use BLAST, a BLAST interface, and someone doing molecular dy dynamics might use NAMD. So we're building a whole suite of, of GUI interfaces that sit on top of the grid, and we're, we're sort of calling that a cloud because that's the way the uh, user experiences the, using the grid in that way.